Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to the Commentary Zone. Um, on the docket today, we have Married at First Sight Australia, Season 11, Episodes 33 and 34. We're getting to the end, y'all. Oh, my God. Buckle up, bring your notes and something to drink, and let's talk about it. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to the Commentary Zone. As you enter the room, please don't forget to give us a little thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and tell a friend. Okay, we're down to the final episodes. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Oh, my God. Jamal, was it worth it? <laughs> this is like, okay, how can I put this nicely? Um, oh. You know, unfortunately, I, I'm enjoying it, but I don't like the spoilers for the show. This is like the one of those shows I don't want the spoilers for because I wouldn't be able to enjoy the mess in the time I'm seeing. This year is the worst that it's ever been. We've never had leaks this early. Like during filming, they had their first leak. Never had it this bad. Mm -hmm. And it, it has kind of ruined it but i think it caused production to change some stuff in the edit um but i'm not sure i like that right it kind of ruins it though for, for me it only ruins it because i want to be because this is some mess and i like to enjoy this mess like mm -hmm. you know this has the potential to be like sam and ennis mess but the spoilers ruined it well, look, everybody was coming down on Jono. And my thing is, Ellie was involved in that. And ain't nobody blaming Ellie. Right. He wasn't texting himself. And he wasn't being flirty with himself. But anyway, let's you know pile is, on to Jono. You know what the problem is, though? I think the, the, the crux of the issue is that Jono reached out to her first. Which is intent. That's for me, that's the biggest issue I have. Mm -hmm. Because why are you reaching out to um Ellie and you're married? But I'm gonna say this though. I'm going to need to see the timeline of those texts mm -hmm. because I wanna know was this did he do that because he and Lauren were fighting at the time? No excuse. And we said back then that when Ellie, well, he was checking out Ellie, like, are you okay? Like, how are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. We see you, Jono. We see that. Because remember, when she was first having issues with Ben, he was the first one, like, Ellie, are you okay? Um, the one and only time we saw him raise his voice at the dinner table was interrogating Ben. And when Ben said, um, I, I'm not sure if I want to have children and he said, it's a yes or no question. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait, who is that? Who is that? But I'm Steven said in a Yahoo Australia interview that ben, that that Jono got an interesting edit because like we see as the viewers of the television show, this quiet, reserved person who is mm -hmm. very tempered in his responses to anything. And in truth and facts, especially sitting at the, the dinner parties, he had an opinion on everything. He was verbal. He was jumping into the mess. He would like every like he cast the, the, the first stone. Like we all thinking that Lauren was the troublemaker. And La when Lauren said, I need somebody who who um who has an opinion. Remember when she was um when she told him that she that he was boring. I think mm -hmm. she called him boring or something like that. And she wanted somebody, it, yes, because it was right after the picture challenge. And he was like, This person is lovely, and she's lovely, and she's quite lovely. Everybody was lovely. <laughs> She's like, I want somebody who'll be able to make a choice. Make a, you're so boring. I feel like I would like swallow you or something like that. Like overpower him with her personality. 
Um, but he was just as judgmental as she was. Right. He was he was just he was just tame compared to her, which is mm -hmm. why he liked her going off. Because when she goes off, he can get his he can give he his can little jump opinion. in the back. He can yes. get his lick from behind her and go, mm. right. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Wow, that sounds like a that sounds like a punk. Okay, let's say hi to everybody, and then we'll go through the the final um, commitment ceremony and go and see who we have left on our chart. Okay, so hi, Auntie. Um, oh, we're glad you're feeling better and good that it's in time for Easter. Happy Easter, everybody! To those who celebrate, it's Good Friday today. Don't forget to eat fish. Um, I've messed that up already, so I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Hi, Susan. Uh, do, 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 do. Hi, Tracy. Um, no, we were late. We had to push back a little bit, but you're, you know, you're always on time with us. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. What are we going to do now? Oh, we're going to suffer until next year. This is exactly what I do. You did not see spoilers, Susan. What rock were you under? The spoilers were being leaked from last year. And it started off with who the cast was. That was the first spoiler. And that's why all of the mess came out with Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, my problem is he's the one that's married. He's wrong. Well, she kind of was married too. Not really, but I don't know. They're not legally married on this show, which is kind of like a bummer. Um, I think both of them were wrong. Both of them. Um, because I don't talk to none of my my girlfriend's husbands, period. Mm -hmm. And if the 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 husband is my friend, I don't talk to the wife unless I have to. Like I, I I'll have, send the message through the spouse to the other one. I'll put it to you this way. I have a firm rule. I am never friends with my friends' significant others, ever. The only time, if I meet you as a couple, that's one thing. But if I have a friend, if I'm friends with the, uh, if I'm friends with the, with like say the wife of the couple, I'm friends with the wife, not yeah. the husband. Yeah. And vice versa. And the reason is, is because you need to understand where my loyalty lies and my loyalty always lies with my friend. And if they're, they're wrong, if they wrong, I'm going to, back them up as far as I can in public, but behind the scenes, yeah, I'm going to let you have it. Like you was dead ass oh. wrong, but I'm not going to That's get into That's not that. my reason. That's not my reason. My mm -hmm. reason is as a single woman and I have mm -hmm. a friend with a wife. Yes. I don't want to really have any interaction with your husband. Right. So if I, like, if he said to say hi to me, I'll say, Oh, tell him I said, hi, how you doing? Right. Um, but if like you know, I, I'm like I don't know. I don't even yeah. know because like I don't do anything with somebody husband. It's just right. like a no, thank you, ma'am. Oh, an example, an example. Um, my friend was going to get a surgery, and she was like, "Just call my husband." And I was mm -hmm. like, "No, that's okay. Just." Let him send me um, a, a, a DM through social media or a text when you get out of the, the anesthesia and everything is all clear. Just have him send me a text. I'm not calling nobody. And I'll just respond with an okay. But tell him to copy you on it. So mm -hmm. it's like the three of us in there. Right. And she's like, what? I said, I am a single woman. You are a married woman. There's a big difference between the two of us. You are my friend. That is your husband. And she was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then she was like getting it. And, and I was like, but, good. We understand each other. Right. But true. But if the roles were reversed now, when you are friends with the male and they have a wife, if you're friends with the I feel it's okay if you're friends with the male first and then the wife is just a byproduct. I, I, I don't think that friendship, I'm not going to change my behavior because you here. Um, but I, I, that's I, because you're a dude. But it kind of gets tricky with a guy and a girl that are friends. I have found that when my male friends get married, that I kind of back off from that relationship and I reread all 
text and DM communications. I, I understand because there is a double standard with, with even within context. There is mm-hmm. because it's always the woman. Oh, like oh, she she after your husband, but you don't really hear that about men. Like oh, he's after your wife. So I, I get it. No, no, no I get it. Mm-hmm. But it is all... especially in the industry I come from. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cheating. And I Mm want to make sure that any communication that I have with a married colleague cannot be interpreted as at the next sales convention, uh, convention, convention, we going to like meet up, right? No, we're not going to have any of that. But that's where it all go down. (laughs) Oh, the the, the convention? Yeah. Yeah. The the Hilton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, it's kind of because I've I've gotten calls like this woman out here looking for her husband. And she don't know that he down in the employee parking lot with so and so. And I'm like, wait, what? Or, you know, hey, have you seen so and so? Yeah. Hey, have you seen so and so? Yeah. I just saw that car at this hotel. Not knowing they didn't know. It's like, oh, maybe. I, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They know that. Oh, that's too bad. Uh huh, it's it's kind of strange. So it, I do have a double standard. No, I'm not gonna but lie. It's fair, but it's fair As because a of the woman, connotation. I like, have a double yes. standard. Yeah. it does. No, it does because the women are always held. Their feet are always held to the fire mm-hmm. when they text a married man, even though they're friends. Whereas a man doesn't get that same that same judgment. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So it I, is true. Because women are always seen as man eaters or man hunters, whereas the men, like, you know, it's like, whatever. And the men will be the first one to send you, like, the stupid, oh, my God, the overtly sexual DM, and you'd be like, don't send this to me again. Mm-hmm. This is a company phone. Don't get me fired with you. That's how you have to phrase it. Got That's it. why I always kept a personal phone. I had a company phone and I had my personal phone. And ain't Google Voice a wonderful thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it eliminated the second phone. It eliminated yes. the second phone. Oh my God. All right. So Tracy but, says, I saw that too, Debbie. I didn't want to add any spoilers waiting for these episodes. Steven said he got a bad edit. He um, he really made things sound like production re- is really involved. Yes. We all know that, like all of them, every year c- come out saying, oh, I got a bad edit. Steven saying someone else got a bad edit. We don't care. We just need production to, to spin really good stories on these fools who decide to sign up for this stupid show so that Correct. we can be vastly entertained once a year. <laughs> um, I guess I stay just with the show. Oh, no, I, I start putting my ears to the gutter and listening to everything and reading everything that I can. Um, from like, the, I think they start filming end of summer for us. Um, which is winter for them, um, but like around somewhere between August, September, and October, they start filming. And um, I wasn't expecting to like have the cast released, and it wasn't. It was leaked. Yeah, and that kind of ruined it. The spoilers are hard to avoid, but I've been trying to block them out. Not me. Come on in. Tell me anything. I want to know the ending before I see the beginning. Um, uh, you don't text without the spouse knowing or involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly, Debbie. You have to draw a line and set standard. I get you all too. As long as it's out in the open, we're not talking about late night calls or private convos. Yeah. Yeah. Colleagues are very dangerous. Conventions out, uh-huh. and especially where you're away from home, there's lots of liquor, and and you know expense accounts. It just gets ridiculous. It it it's another dimension to networking. That's what yeah. I've learned in over 25 years of being in the hospitality industry. It's just another level of networking. Um, yes, been there, done that. I was young and dumb. Child, me too. <laughs> me too. 
But you know, you live, you learn, and you try not to repeat. All right, let's pull up. Thank you guys for joining us today. Let's pull up our exit chart. All right, so let's quickly go through the, the couch session. First up was, oh my God, Sarah and Tim. They still trying to tell us that they are great. Um, and I didn't really care. Are they lying? Um, everybody's getting ready. Um, I let's see if I can get. Where did I feel the? the, the, the... Well, here's the thing with here's the thing okay. here's the thing with Tim. I'm gonna say it like this, ladies. Close your ears. I gotta say this. Tim, everything is pretty good with Tim. Even though he don't trust Sarah because she's doing more than the washing machine. Next. Oh my God. Stop. But the experts are really happy <laughs> to see that they have turned it around so much. And this is a, a like a, a real save on their relationship. Um, Sarah says that everything is working. Tim says trust is tricky, but it's on the way. He feels valued now. Um, he's I just don't understand. You get a few kisses and a tickle and all of a sudden you feel valued. Like, I'm just looking at him like, you are so easy. Debbie, real quick, Tracy, this is my first full season from start to finish. I think I'm going to go back and watch previous seasons. Any suggestions for best <gasps> part past seasons? <laughs> Every season. They're all good. Debbie turned me on to um, Australia because the U.S. was such a bore. And she said, you have to watch Australia. I'm like, they have Australia. And I found Australia and haven't gone back to the U.S. Yeah, I, and you see, start with season one, Tracy. Just, yeah. and the mess just keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's awesome. If you can find them, watch them. They are ridiculous. Um, they push the boundaries of what we we think of as, as like proper and decent. And I get a tickle out of it. Anyway, these two losers say um, stay for both of them. I don't care. Um, next up, I'm going out of order, y'all, because my notes are such a mess. Um, Eden and Jaden. Um they start going in on Jaden, um, coming down on Eden during the dinner party. Um, and he kind of pushes back, but he tell they t John especially says, you know, like you can't argue like the way that you do. Um, she's not your um opponent, she's your partner, and I agree with that, but I think I finally understand what Eden was saying. He just repeats himself. I don't know if it's the edit, but I couldn't talk to somebody like Jaden. I I would turn into Eden going, okay, uh-huh, 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 until I put something in his food. And he got to go to the bathroom and get away from me. That's just basically how I feel with, with these two. But I also think it's an act. I think they really do like each other. And he he was extra and it caused her to regress um do i think that she likes to avoid talking about things hell yeah and that came up at the dinner but we'll wait on that um any any thoughts on these two jamal what do you say any thoughts you. so with these two how can i put this he, in his mind, he's a person who feels that we're going to talk about it. We're going to resolve it. He's all about resolution in the moment. She's not that way. Like you said, she's about sweeping things under the rug and not dealing with it because of her anxiety. So when you, pet, you put someone who has anxiety with someone who's like, I want to resolve it. We need to fix this. Da, 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 da. It's going to cause her to retreat because it feels like an attack. Okay. That's what that's what it is. Because my whole thing is, I do have a rule to where with friends, family, whatever, I don't like going to bed angry. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I do like to like be talking about until there is a resolve. Because if I go to bed mad at you, we're not coming back from it. There's no way. Because I went to bed angry willing. So and I get eaten side because she's saying, hey, this makes me uncomfortable. I need you to back off. So her defense mechanism is to be like, okay, okay, uh-huh. Yeah, you're right. And to him, it's like, well, you're not taking this seriously. You're being condescending. I'm trying to work through this. I'm trying to fix this. And you're not. So I'm glad the expert told him, like, hey, you need to take a step back from that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is like... Go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, I think it's also part of his like sporting mentality. Like in order to get to the next level, like you have to complete one level to get up and it's always being better, 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 better. And I think, I think that seeps into his whole way of dealing with life in general, outside mm-hmm. of what he's doing in sport. But he has to differentiate achieving goals in sports is different to having a relationship. Right. Um, and especially with somebody like her. Um, I it, it's 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 a bit aggressive for me. Would I have handled it like ner- no like her? No, I probably would have like we would have been fighting. See, we I was going to ask fighting. about that. We would have been fighting because I would have said, stop fucking repeating your goddamn self. Think of some fucking else to ask me other than let's talk about this. Because fuck, you ain't hear me saying talking about it. Like, you know, I would have had to express myself. I, and then I would have went out shopping. I wouldn't have sat there and said, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, you ain't fucking right. Get away from me. And then I would have put something in his food. So he had to go to the bathroom. You see, that's my resolution for everything. Put something in your food so you could go to the bathroom and leave me the fuck alone. Oh, like the like the X Lux chocolate cakes back from back in the Correct. day? Correct. 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 I don't want to hear you get away from me. Um, let's see what y'all are saying in here. Um when you get a chance, we come. Um, this is my first season. So, uh, okay, so we did get to you, okay, Tracy. Ah, um, spot on with these two inspiring actors. Jesus Christ, Tracy. <laughs> but I will say this: as much as I kind of wanted them to go home a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. Jaden's here for the mess, and I'm here for him now. Sorry, yes. my, my, I changed. We, I changed my mind. Need them. We do need them. We do need them. We do need them. Unfortunately, these two numbnuts decided both to stay. Next up on the couch is Jade and Ridge. She's still complaining about his immaturity, his her parent, her mother and sister are very concerned. Uh, and you know, she said her biggest fear is that Ridge realizes that this isn't for him and he will find someone better and easier. And I can understand that as a woman in her situation and everything that she's bringing into the relationship. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's long distance involved. I get it. Ridge says that no one will get between them. He's always thinking of her. Um, He has concerns of the distance, but, um, you know, he's making an effort that whenever they get together, they're planning for the next trip. So they have something to look forward to. This is a man who has many facets to his character. Maturity, responsibility, confidentiality, and nurturing, as well as being a jackass with his Mm -hmm. D's thing. But I think right now that's a release and not so much part of his character. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I don't think he could behave like that up in his mama house. Um, let's see. Um, he, they disclose, uh, that at some point he's going to move to the gold coast, gold coast. Um, he's falling in love with Jade. Jade is getting there. Um, with regards to falling in love with him. Um, she likes him a lot. 
and both of them decide to stay. What do you think about this couple? You know, they're going to make it. I, I like them overall. They're kind of necessary because we need someone to root for, if you know what I mean. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not I'm not I'm not mad at them. You know, they're they're a nice little story. You know, they're giving like I said, they're giving me great value Cam and Jules. I'm not mad at y'all. Ah, spoiler alert. Um they are still together. She has highlighted her hair blonde and he has tattooed her name on his somewhere around his shoulder or back. It's small. It's it's within another one of his tattoos, but it's really cute and they are adorable. And like, this is the one couple that I can almost buy behind Cam and Jules as being like a real couple. This is the first one since Cam and Jules that I can actually buy as a real couple. And that's saying a lot. Mm -mm. Anything else regarding um, Jade and Rich? No, they're good. Okay, so next up is Lucinda and Tim. And this is a sad farewell to our dynamic duo. They, um, John wanted to know what happened during the, the home stays. And basically, Lucinda just let it all hang out. You know, no harm, no foul to, to Tim. She read this really cute little poem to him, um, bidding him farewell. Um, basically, the slow burn fizzled out. Um, and he, did he apologize to her? I can't remember. But basically, he, he said that Lucinda is going to be his dear friend for the rest of his life. Like, they have created a bond, but a friendship bond not a loving bond, which is cool. Um, both of them leave looking semi-decent um, and both write leave on their cards. What do you think, Jamal? It's about time. I mean, no, it isn't. Them. We needed them too because Tim is a shit stirrer and the head of Tim's angels. Stop it. I mean, if there is a way to keep them without the, without the relationship, I'm here for it. But you listen, know what I'm can you imagine if Lucinda wasn't there and Tim was like off his leash and running amok, amok like all of these people, what the damage he would have done? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on now. Um, so hold on, Sarah, Tim. Okay, last but not least, let's go to these two. Oh, Tori and Jack. Um, Alessandra takes the lead on these two. Um, I don't care about them. I just don't because they're just one big lie. Um, they have an agreement to tough it out throughout the the rest of the the season. I'm not sure why. They are coming off so Jack, much like Bryce and Melissa. It Jack, kills me. When Jack said, I am here to the end. Like, yeah, you here to the end to get your mm -hmm. bonus. That's what that was. That's what I heard. Yeah. It's That's what my ears heard. Sad. But they're still together. What? I don't know what they're trying to prove. That's why I said they sound so much like Bryce and Melissa from a few seasons ago. Bryce disrespected the dog shit out of Melissa. Like, in the same pattern as Jack. She wasn't pretty in the picture thing, wasn't his type, didn't want to have sex with her. When he finally did start having sex with her, was still disrespecting her, Talk, was talking outside of the experiment with a girlfriend buying her birthday presents. Like, they got caught. He got caught in so many different things. So many different things. Um, Jack is just a, a wash, rinse, and repeat of that couple. 
and they were like Bryce and and Melissa got twins now. Like they were trying wow. to be Cam and and Jules and get their wedding paid for, but people hated them so much that the production company could not do a special on their wedding like they did with Jules and Cam because wasn't nobody gonna watch that mess. <laughs> Nobody liked them. This is how low I think of them. They are just playing with me and I cannot stand it. I just cannot stand it. I I don't know why they bring these people on these shows that I have so many issues with. But anywho, um, both of them decide to stay. Um, last but not least, it is... Lauren and Jonathan, they're talking. And then all of a sudden, Tori steps in and says that somebody brought to her attention today that Jonathan was sending text messages to Ellie during the experiment. And Lauren makes it seem like she was surprised about this. Tori, in her confessional, she was just like, oh, um, I'm euphoric at being able to share this news um, on what he's doing. And I'm like, that's not your friend. That's not your friend. Um revise that friendship, Lauren, because I don't like how she said that. And then, of course, we hear in the spoilers mm -hmm. that Lauren knew ahead of time, mm -hmm. but she still took a lot of glee and satisfaction in being able to hurt Lauren. And I don't think Lauren did that to Tori anytime that she brought up something regarding Jack. Um, Lauren, reevaluate your friendships. Anything on them? <sighs> so, this is why I say I don't like the spoilers. I like Lauren. Mm -hmm. Jono, not so much, but I would love to see Lauren back with somebody different. Jono, don't care. Nah. He's all I got Ellie on the outside, mm -hmm. you know, chilling, waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, like I said, Lauren deserves better. But the way Jono was just dismissive, like I didn't do anything wrong, this, this, and that. Here's my whole thing. Now, your best friends, you might text like that. But mm -hmm. Lauren made a fantastic point. Like I was never mentioned in these hundred messages. No, Lauren's in the hospital. Um, how is Lauren? How's married life? None of that. Like, who said it? Like, Jaden's store in the pot. Like, that's a get to know you type conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you ain't lying. And I get it. Like, how are you going to be like, you know, sleeping with your, be intimate with your wife, but then texting another chick on the outside? Come on now. Mm -hmm. that, was and my, that was my whole thing. It might have started off like I, I can give him. OK, so you want to know how is she doing? Does she make it home? OK, fine. But then like 100 texts later. Right. Um. Again, this is the line I'm not going to cross. I'm not like you and me ain't friends. Ellie, I'm talking to you, Ellie. Um, and he should have known better, too. But I don't think he ever really respected Lauren. That was apparent from the muzzle your wife comment. Um, little did we know that Jack had so much ammunition on him. Um, but all I can say to Jonathan, Jonathan, pick your friends better, too. Because this is what your friend Jack did to you. Mm -mm. Um, okay, now, have they brought people back before? What do you mean? Like people who came, um, who left the the season, have they come back to be a part of it? I, oh, wait, kind of, sort of. Dan and Jessica. 
because Dan was married to somebody else and Jessica was married to somebody else. So they were supposed to go home because they, they all wrote leave, but the experts decided to keep Jessica and Dan to break the rules or, or establish a new rule. And they kept Jessica and Dan, even though they were in separate relationships and cheating on their spouses during the course of the season. I remember they, that. Yeah, and they that was kept hilarious. Them. They kept them and that turned out to be a dumpster fire. <laughs> because it was more exciting cheating Yes. Them being in an actual relationship. Jessica and Dan, they were, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And, <laughs> and the experiment lost their minds. Like, how can you reward this bad behavior? We're like, we're sitting here like because it's drama and it's a mess. That's why that's, that's how they're that's how they're um bringing them back. Because mm -hmm. Dan was mad disrespectful to uh, um she was a brunette. Yeah, and Jessica was with, with like the farmer type dude, right? The farmer the guy. Yeah. Yes. I I I. Ooh, like and then and then towards ah. the end, he's like, and then towards the end, he said like, um, I'm not sure if I'm feeling you like that because you know I got a child and all that. There was, there was, oh yeah, because he never let Jessica meet his son. Never. That was the mess. That, and they was living together outside of the experiment. Hot damn. But anyway, there was one girl who came back. And, oh, God, what was her name? She was, like, really weird and, and wacky. Um, but her husband left her on the honeymoon and then came back and said that um, he had to go home for somebody's funeral but his phone wasn't working. Yes. And it was it was in um that he went to New Zealand but came yes. back and cheated on her with Inez. Sam. I think it was yes. It was Sam. Yeah. It was Sam. Sam and Ennis. Yes. Because yes. she was with Bronson. Yes, the male stripper. Yeah, we who made it the, big in business. Yes. We were team Bronson all the way, but we were kind of team Sam and Ennis for the mess. Yes. But that blonde hair girl that was with Sam, she came back the following season with dark hair and cleaned up and she lost a up. bunch of weight. And she had a really good relationship. So they brought her back the following season. What was her name? She was so weird. I think like that whole thing with him leaving her on the honeymoon without telling her, I think that triggered something deep in her that she didn't really discuss yes. with us. But it was crazy. It was crazy. Sounds like the juicy mess I want to see. Yes, Tracy, it is. It's tawdry. It's it's debauchery. It's it's candid camera. It's just awesome. I'm lost. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can find her name. Hold on. Um, oops. On maths Australia, um, Lizzie, Lizzie, uh, uh, but she came back as Elizabeth the next season, like yes. trying to do this whole revamp or whatever. But she was right. crazy, Lizzie. Crazy Lizzie. Um, I think I'm gonna have fun watching all seasons. I hope you can find them. I really do because it's it's an Australian show. They have limited shelf life, but if you can't just prepare for the end of next January in 2025, just block out two months and, um, and watch with me. Cause I'll be watching it. God spare life. Um, and, and we can have another, um, another fun time watching the bottom of the barrel, um, mm -hmm. with these losers. Okay. So. Jono and Lauren both write stay, but Lauren is like, this is before I knew, before what I found out now, which is a lie because she admitted after the fact that she knew about it beforehand. 
so she could have changed it, but the production told her they obviously need her around for something. So they want to do an epic final commitment ceremony where they dress up as brides and grooms and try to renew their vows. And um, they want to see a SmackDown. Um, and I do too. I do too. Okay, so this is our tally going into the final um, commitment ceremonies. We have Eden and Jaden. We have um, Jade and Ridge, Lauren and Jonathan, uh, Sarah and Tim, Tori and Jack. Five couples, two nights of madness. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? So let's get to the next dinner party. Because normally we don't have another dinner party after the final couch session. It goes into the um, the the wedding ceremonies. Mm -hmm. But they had to throw in another dinner party so that they could let Lauren rip loose. <laughs> and why do we know this? Because they threw in um the 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 boxes okay can we can we sh okay now we go in on we go in on production <laughs> normally but i'm going to shout out production because they were so messy with those questions yep that was some setup if i've never seen a setup before mm -hmm. and no one was spared they was all catching strays Oof, 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 oof. But uh, I mean, if ever there was a definition of of like and uh, like a machine gun, it was Lauren when her questions came around. Um, okay, so let's let's go ahead. They come to the cocktail party, whatever. Let's just go to dinner. Um, dinner party. Here we go. The first person, the first people who get, oh no, they go around giving toasts. Right. Why? And, and then Sarah, we get how messy. Sarah. <laughs> Let's toast to Jono, um, texting Ellie. Shut up. Shut up. But here's the thing though. Right toast, wrong person. Mm, who would you have wanted to give that toast? If I'm being, if I'm being super messy, Rich. No, don't mess it, up. Don't mess. Rich, don't. It had to be Rich or Jaden for me. Let Jaden do it. <laughs> Let Jaden do it. <laughs> it. One of those two. Oh my God. Um. Let's see. Uh. Da, da, da. Hold, let me take off my glasses. Um, let's see. So the da Okay. Um, so they send in. Where do they send in the boxes? They send, they send Here, the honesty the boxes. Here right. we go. First one up is Tim and Sarah. Are they just lying to each other? I just, yes. I, I, I don't care. Um. She did say the right things this time, though. She said that she acknowledged that she hurt him with her actions. But she's still saying that this is emotional cheating. Okay, girl. If that's what, if that's what you want to call it. Okay. Um, he says that he's got a thing for her. And even though he doesn't like her fight style... Um, you know, with regards to communication, the one know if she's over her ex. Um, he says that he's getting there some shit like that. I don't know. I, I really wasn't paying attention to them. So they got through theirs. She seems to think that they're in a great relationship and he's a mess, whatever. Anyway, next up is Tori and Jack. This was a disaster. Like, Tori answered her questions like how you would expect a, a, a person who's gotten this far in the experiment would answer. 
But he said something about how he could sleep at night. Was that that? <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. Um, and I was looking for season 11. I did not see if you all seasons or Peacock think Philo. You might find some on Lifetime. Lifetime. You have to look on Lifetime um, and see if they have them. Um, and if you're looking online, look on mylifetime.com. If you have Lifetime in your cable package, just do a search, um, you know, for for um, on demand and see if they have anything in there. And you can see a couple of the the seasons on Lifetime. Um, let's see what else. Uh, do, 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 do. She says that she's anxious about the distance, but Jack cut her off. I thought that was very interesting. Um, she says that she could fall in love with him. He asked how many, um, what? He asked her if she's been in love before and she said no. And he kind of smirked. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to use that against her in the future, yep. but good on him. But see, he lost me. Well, he's always lost me, but when it was the, it was the baby situation that lost me because it was performative. Mm. He said, he said that to keep her there, which I, I'm going to say it like this, this is going to be rude, but I feel that he slept with her to make sure she stays so they get to the end. So he gets that bonus. But remember, Timothy said that he felt that they made up the the sleeping together thing to put people off of them. I get that. But here's the whole thing, though. Women tend not to lie on their vajayjays. Men will lie on their penises all the time. But I would say that for someone who's like Jade, who is uber feminine, Tori gives off a lot of masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And I feel she wouldn't have, if it reach, means, her, means reaching her ultimate goal, I don't mm -hmm. think she has any problem with any creative storytelling. Oh, so she you think she's an ends justify the means type person. Correct. That kind of Correct. Okay. And I'm just saying that based on how she says, you know, I left my career to come and do this. I left making money to come and do this. Like she has an ultimate goal in mind. Yes. And 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 the ends justify the means for her in her head. Okay. I can I can roll with that. Mm -hmm. Jaden's jacket sport code. Did he say that was? Yes. Mitch also wore that same suit during his season. And he decided to wear it here. But they are vastly different in size. So I want to know how Jaden is fitting into Mitch's suit. That's, that was just my question. But I think it looked cuter on Jaden than it did on Mitch. Um, yes, I believe crazy. Jack said that he can sleep at night. Oh my God. Thanks. That's what I was saying. I found them in Phyllis lifetime. Some are unlocked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Jack says that he's also concerned about the long distance. Um, he's proud of her. Um, Something about they have a sexual attraction net. Oh, he didn't have the sexual attraction at first. Um, but about a month ago, he picked it up like the flu. Um, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. um the, the, he's at about a 9.5 or something like that. Um, he's not in love, but he could he could see himself falling in love. But not specifically with her. <laughs> hey, y'all, Debbie said it. Debbie said it. Yes, Tracy, I dislike Mitch. I dislike Mitch a lot. <laughs> he did Ella wrong. He did Ella wrong, and I don't care. Um, 
And at the end of their questions, you saw when when she said when everybody she saw everybody was looking at them. She turned to him and she said, uh, "Kiss me, just fake it." Yeah, I was like, "Oof." <laughs> Again, another reason why I think that she's here for some reason in her head ends justify means she's good with it. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Um, next up with the honesty box is Jaden Ridge. And she says that she's, um, she's got feelings. He swept her off her feet. Um, she's saying all these nice things about him and he goes into the D's and she turns around. Nobody said anything about this, but they're all shocked at her reaction. Saying, stop it. Stop acting like that. Or I'll stop saying nice things about you. But she hit him. Nobody commented on that, just her reaction. And I thought that was strange. Um, and you're talking about his immaturity, but is that like, I thought that was like an over the top reaction. Not so much her telling him to stop behaving like that, but the hitting part. Mm -hmm. Then you, why you had to do that at the table? I just think her reaction could have been that it could have been a whole lot different. And again, what did he say? Like, I must not know what the real meanings of what he's saying coming out of his mouth is in, in Australia. Is it that offensive for that type of reaction? Um, let the man behave like he's not he's not pulling out his wiener and throwing it everywhere. Like, no, Um He's just saying a bunch of weird terms. Mm -hmm. And this is me who is aged out of this generation. Like, I should be reacting like that, not her. Um, it was it, it was quite a reaction. Uh, but here's the whole thing. I saw, my whole thing is this with them. If, if, if he had hit her, it would be a whole problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it would be a whole issue. People would be wanting him in jail, like he's abusive, blah, blah, blah. But he knows how to turn it around, though, because then he turns back to her and he says, um, what he says, um, she says that he says that she is it for him for the rest of his life. And it just makes him so happy. And that's why he, you know, behaves like that. He's 100% ready to be present in these life. His timeline is revised to three months. And then she goes, oh. and she's like putty in his hands. And everything she just did is forgotten at the table because they think that they're, they're so cute. Right. Mm-mm-mm. Exactly. When he said it, I thought he was like, he was happy. He was like, this is my girl, this is my girl, because I think she has selective hearing. I think she focuses on all the wrong things because this guy is amazing. This guy is security for her and her mm -hmm. child. He wants y'all as a package. Girl. Oh, when he spoke, it was so sweet and mature. Yes. Like, I don't think she gives his mature side enough credit. I don't think she understands the magnitude of what he does as a profession. Mm. I think for him, I, I'm piggybacking what you said last week. I think he has such a high stress job that when he wants to come home, he just wants to be able to relax and be himself. And Jay's not really understanding that. Because you matter, like, like like you said, when he's at work, no matter how long his shift is, right? Say he's working that eight to ten hour shift, right? Could you imagine, literally, have to being that vigilant mm -hmm. for eight to ten hours a day? But nurses work twelve hour shifts. See, so yeah, see, I was want to say I wasn't really sure. Mm -hmm. So it's twelve hours. Could you have to imagine being that vigilant for twelve hours? I should rephrase that. U.S. nurses work 12-hour shifts. I'm not sure what it is overseas, so y'all could correct me. I'm sure y'all will correct me. Um, but U.S. nurses work 12-hour shifts. My my friend does 12-hour shifts. Um, 
I, and he's a psych nurse at that. Yes. Like I think, like I think, like regular nurse, ER nurse, um, surgical nurse, and then you got like psych nurse. Uh. -uh. <laughs> Let that man say whatever he wants coming out of his mouth as, as long as it's not disrespectful to you. If, if he wants to spend five minutes being immature, let him spend five minutes being immature. It'll be practice for when y'all have a baby and you're going to want him to get down on the floor and do all of the little immature things with your baby. You're going to think it's cute then, sweetie. Oh, my God. Like, as, long, as, long, as long as he's not decent in front of Victoria, it's fine. Okay. That's how I look at it. Okay, so Jack was thinking at dinner party. Now I only have 90 days to steal Jade away from Ridge. Oh, my God. And Tracy uh, oh, says, again at the dinner party, Tori feeling the glazed ham chest while Jade was <coughs> talking. No worries, Tori. Nobody wants your man. <coughs> well, maybe at Christmas, you know, with some cloves and some pineapple rings. You know, I love me a Christmas ham. Stress reliever. Yes, Susan, exactly. Um, I got the immature thing, but at that moment, I just didn't think it deserved that reaction. Correct. Correct. Um, and he's not your child, Jade. He's not your child. Leave him alone. He's a full grown man. Stop it. If the producers told you to do that, you went a little too far, in my opinion. Um, he's proven he's mature. Yep. More than capable um next up <laughs> is lauren and jano uh, uh, what we've been waiting for for the whole night um this this was just rapid fire Lauren let loose in him. He couldn't defend himself. Then he just became obstinate and was basically insulting towards the end. Right. Not a good showing for you, Jono. But then Tori's got to step in and say something that Jack told um, told her while Jono and him were at the gym that Jono said that he felt that if he was matched with Ellie, he would have had a better time um, on the experiment. And Jono said, that's not what I said. I said, if I was matched with anybody else, I would have had an easier time on the experiment. It's still an insult, boo. And so you were lying before when you said that you have a good time with her, with, um, with Lauren, that she's fun. Right. Going to the dinner parties, she makes them fun. Like when she's attacking everybody else. Like, right. I don't get it. I don't get it. Ah, uh, Jono, you just messed this up. Jono was getting the fire. His voice and high pitched whining is annoying the fuck out of me. Yeah. I, I, I knew it wasn't going to happen. I was hoping for once he would boss up. But no. Mm -mm. Um, let's see if he said anything. Um, he, he basically said that Lauren is blowing the texting out of proportion. Um, the whole thing about, um, why weren't you here was basically, um, about him having his 40th birthday. And she said, oh, you, why aren't you getting, um, Botox? Cause I think she works at a, um, a place that does that. And cause she is a nurse, um, mm -hmm. as well. And, um, he said, well, why aren't you here? Meaning to give the injections. Um, let's see. Let's talk about the texting part. So what did, for you, for you, what's the, what's the more egregious part of the, um, the situation in, in your mind? Do I think that they should have had all of those texts? No, no. Um, Especially where he's not even talking about Lauren. Um, 
I, I just find it very odd that I, I in, like in my head, I'm thinking as a single woman and why Ellie would engage in texting someone else's husband who's still in the experiment. Like mm -hmm. after he sent me the note about, hi, did you get home okay? I'd have been like, yeah, I did. Thank you so much for checking in on me. I'm getting back to my normal life. All the best. I'll see you at the at the reunion or whatever. That's mm -hmm. what I would have said. Because you're interfering in, in that relationship if you're doing that. Which then leads me to think, were they more than than friends while they were there that they felt it was okay to continue talking to each other? Mm -hmm. Like that didn't make any sense. And some of the girls were saying the texts were get to know you texts. And I agree, I agree with I agree like, with that. That's red flags for me because Ellie and Jono should have pulled back. She is Ellie is no longer in her um experiment, but Jono still is. And you're tilting, you're you're skewing that experiment by continuing to speak with him. Agreed. My crux of the issue is with Jono is because you reached out first, which and the, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this context. Isn't there the, a discrepancy there? Well, he said she reached out. He said that he reached out first. Sorry. On the on the commitment couch, he said one thing, but then she, changed it at the dinner. Right. So, so which one was it? Which one was correct? That's, that's part one. Saying that Jono reached out first, we'll, let's go with that. That's the last That's the last lie I told. So that's why, that's why I tend to go with. Mm -hmm. If you reached out first, first and you're married uh -huh. how comfortable are you have to be really comfortable and bold to do that you know what i mean uh -huh. and to think there's nothing wrong which leads me to believe that you two have some sort of prior communication in the experiment uh -huh. before you reached out because yeah. that's just way too bold yeah. Yeah. I, he didn't score any points for me. Neither did Ellie. Um, and then he kept saying, she's not my type. She's not my type. Ellie, mm -hmm. you seem nice and stupid, but the way how you get them is the way how you lose them. And technically I know he wasn't married legally to Lauren. But there was a commitment to this experiment, and he right. broke it with you. I think this is what Jono does. I think when situations become something he doesn't want to deal with, he just walks away and, mm. and, and has nothing more to do with it. Um. I don't think Jono and Ellie are going to last. Girl, you are wasting your last fertile years on all the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. Jono has been 2.0. <laughs> Just with more money. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here's the whole thing. Here's the thing with that, though. I'm looking at Ellie like this, ma'am. Ma'am. Jono seems to skew younger. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. He is now 14. Uh -huh. You want chill, you want children. Do you really think he's gonna settle down with you? Uh -huh. True, Tracy. Hey Jono, how's Cassandra, Andy, and Lu Lucinda? He only mentioned men that he was talking to to ask how they was doing, mm -hmm. and then Ellie. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But okay, you do you, Jono. Um, but it it's just a little off putting to me. And I I and I know they all come into this experiment still considering that they're single. Look mm -hmm. at Jack sat there a couple episodes ago and said, I'm single. Yep. Everybody at the table had to correct him and say, No, you're married. 
Nobody thinks they're married in this experiment. And that's why they do all this nastiness. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But good on them. Um, hold on. Da, 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 da. Okay. Next up. Last but not least, we have Evening Jaden. She asks the first question. He says, I'm in love with you. She hugs him, whispers it back into his ear and says, we don't have to go through any more questions. Done with the honesty box. That's it. <laughs> and she's not disclosing anything more in her relationship. Um, good, good one, um, Eden. Evading, um, discussing your relationship, like what J Jaden has been saying for quite a few episodes now. Mm -hmm. um, Jaden said that he's been trying to figure out how to tell her this for the longest time. And I believe him because he said he was at 9.5 a, a few um, commitment ceremonies ago. He likes her. She likes him. They look good running on the beach with a dog. Yes, that's from other, um, spoiler alert, they're still together. Um, they look cute. As long as he stays away from any of Mitch's advice, I think that they'll be happy. Right. And that was the end of the two episodes that we watched. Um, okay, any... You guys, all right, so guys, that's it this week for our shows. We're going to do the um, the wedding ceremonies. I think I think that Lauren and Jay and Jono's will be a total disaster. They're setting it up for Jack um, to, to like, you know, leave Tori. Cause she's giving her faces and he's like, I'm not in love with you. Mm -hmm. They'll stay together. They'll stay together. Um, I love him to the end, whatever. <laughs> True. She shut it down real quick. She, she proved everything that Jaden was saying in that one scene. Um, but anyway, y'all. Um, so like I said, that was the, ep the two episodes, um, Sunday, we're going to have the final commitment ceremonies. Um, Lauren's dress looks like she's falling out of it again. God bless her. I will miss her so much. Um, it should be, it should, yeah, I think, well, they used to come together for a reunion and I remember Ridge saying, Let's ask Ellie at the reunion. Yes, he did. He did. So hopefully we get one. Hopefully we get one. But Sunday night is the first wedding. Um, They have five couples. They could split those up between two nights and then do the reunion um, on Tuesday night. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping for. Because um, that should be a hot mess. So join us next week. Next week, unfortunately, will be the last. Another season of Married at First Sight Australia will be done and dusted. And we will have to stay um, anticipating next year's um, crop of losers. All right, y'all. It's been fun. Um, have a wonderful Good Friday. Enjoy your Easter weekend with your friends and your family. Stay safe and join us back here next Thursday and Friday um, for more shenanigans with our losers. All right, y'all. Jamal, any final thoughts? No, we are good to go. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for the new subscribers that we got. We really appreciate it. And um, enjoy the holiday weekend. Bye, y'all.